our speed control wiring is done, and the next thing we need to do is mount the enclosure. But before that, we need to attach this M12 bulkhead connector into the enclosure. And you just take those wires and thread them right through that hole you made. And we'll attach the bulkhead connector to the enclosure with the little nut that came with it. Once that's done, we can move on to attaching the enclosure to the 8020 extrusion with the enclosure mount that you fabricated. So we'll be using the same T-nuts and bolts that we used to put the rest of the frame together with. You should have quite a few left over. And there is the mounting bracket. So the bolts we've been using so far are a little too long for this bracket, so you're going to want to stack a couple washers up on each bolt uh, before you thread them into those, uh, those nuts. That'll help take up some slack and hold the enclosure mount securely to the frame. Just make sure that the end of the enclosure bracket is flush with the end of the extrusion before you tighten everything down. We'll mount the enclosure to the bracket with two quarter inch by one inch long bolts, two washers, two lock washers, and two nuts. You can do this part yourself, but it's really nice to have an extra hand to hold things steady while you tighten down these nuts and bolts. After you get the enclosure up, we're going to need to pass this four wire uh, shielded conductor cable through the enclosure panel and down the body of the lathe. Fish the wire through the frame until you have about 12 inches left in the enclosure. Then trim the wire sticking out of the lathe so there's about 6 inches left. And save that wire for later. Strip off about an inch and a half of the outer jacket of the wire and strip and twist all the ends of the wires. We're going to work on the other end of the lathe for a little bit here. I'm going to take those remaining end caps that we used at the beginning of the lathe build uh, to cap the 8020 extrusion and uh, the little push pins and just put those right on there. Uh, I've drilled a hole in the one that goes on top and mounted the remaining bulkhead connector into it. Take the bulkhead connector that you mounted into the end cap and trim off some of those wires. Leave about three to four inches. And then strip those wires away and twist the ends. Just a little detail here. Strip off enough wire that you can fold it back on itself and twist it up. These wires are kind of thin, 
and this helps with the connection that we're going to make. We're going to connect the bulkhead wires to the wires running through the lathe with some butt splices. And you can just pick these up at the hardware store, slide it over the end of the wire, and crimp it. And repeat that for the rest of the wires. We need to connect these four pairs of wires together. And it's important that each wire goes to the correct corresponding wire coming through the lathe. So the brown wire is going to go to the black wire. The white wire from the bulkhead connector is going to go to the green wire. The blue wire from the bulkhead connector is going to go to the white wire. And lastly, the black wire from the bulkhead connector is going to go to the red wire that's passing through the lathe. Once all the wires are connected, we can mount that cap to the end of the lathe. You may want to go around to the other side and fish some of the wire back through the enclosure to make things a little cleaner and uh, easier to put together. There we go. Nice and clean looking. Now we'll move on to the cable chain. As it comes to you, the cable chain's a little long. It's just kind of sticking out into outer space there, and it's, it's really more than we need. So what I've done is I'm going to pop the end off and remove about a foot. Just take a little screwdriver and pop the hinge open and the cable chain comes apart real easy. And then just push that little mounting bracket right back onto the end. And that's a much better length. So one thing I failed to account for in building this lathe was that the lathe bed is longer than my prototype lathe. This means that we'll need to remove the connector from the end of the chuck if you've put it on and add a little wire extension. We'll bolt the cable chain to the frame using the same components we used before. A T-nut and a bolt with some washers to take up the slack. 
I show you how to attach the cable chain to the chuck in the Chucks 2 video. Fish the wire from the chuck through the cable chain. You may need to temporarily unbolt the cable chain from the frame to make this easier. Here's a little detail I forgot to share with you earlier. The bolt may not fit through the hole in the cable chain that you have. You're probably going to have to drill it out to accept a 5 16 inch bolt. In addition, the flange on the bolt is probably not going to fit through the sidewalls on the end piece. I just used a pair of wire cutters to clip them off. After you take those steps, everything should bolt down nicely. Now since the cable from the chucks doesn't quite reach the end of the lathe going through the cable chain, we're going to have to add a little bit of extension wire. I'm using butt splices again. You can use any connector you like, but butt slices are cheap and easy. We're going to use that extra little bit of four wire connecting cable that we have left over. And again, it's important that we get these wires to match up. So we're going to go black to black. red to red, green to green, and white to blue. Cut the other end of the cable to length. It just needs to reach the end of the lathe with one of those connectors on it. Strip off all the wires. We're going to wire up the connector back onto this wire just like we had before, with one exception. The white wire is going to take the place of the blue wire. So there's numbers on here and the wires are going to be wired up black into number one, green into number two, white into number three, and red into number four. Once you've got those wires terminated, screw the whole assembly back together. And to finish up this video, we're just going to screw that connector in. And you can see the tailstock rolls back and forth. The cable chain carries the wire nice and easy. No kinks, nothing getting bound up. Really clean. Thanks for watching.